Hi everyone, welcome to Eliza Prittle Equestrian. Super excited as you know to be bringing you this foal training course. We were blessed last night with the birth of a beautiful little boy. He's not so little, he's a giant as you'll see. Uh, that's Freya behind us and he's just sleeping uh, just beside her there. You can see him, he's flat out at the moment, but she's been a fabulous mare. We did have some complications with her with a retained placenta, but she is happy and sound as far as we are going now. So. Today I'm going to present to you day number one and it's the first things that we do. Now we did have an evening birth, we had a 9.30pm birth which was pitch black and unfortunately with mares that are a little bit sensitive as Freya is, interfering too much with that birthing process at night that is shining lights and things on her is not a great thing. So we didn't get a lot of videoing done directly after his birth but I'm going to show you today exactly what I went through only moments after he's bonded with his mum. So the first thing we really want to allow is for the foal to bond with the mare. We do not interfere until they start talking to each other. So she'll nicker to him constantly and when he starts nickering back, but before he is up walking, we step in and do a little tiny, tiny bit of work. Now imprinting a foal has really, really good uh, implications and also bad implications in the, the life of the foal. So I don't over imprint my foals. It is a tiny little bit of work and the, the purpose of that work is simply to get the foal accepting touch. And you'll see in, immediately you start touching that foal, they will react. And he, as he reacts, we need to stay with him and very gently continue what we're doing until he calms to the touch. And very shortly I'm going to show you the video that I did with him when he was very, very new. So today, after we continue with the, the, the little tiny bit of imprint training that we do as a brand new one to two hour old foal, then once we know we can, as long as the mare is, is being um, amicable, we then start working with the foal with the basics of training and that's what I'm going to show you today. Now the little guy has uh, had a little bit of training already and I'm going to show you how I did that exactly. Because we were dealing with a mare that had an extremely urgent uh, health issue, we couldn't do the filming of when I first did what you'll see as the foal wrap, but you will see exactly how I go through it and what his responses are and how I fix any negative responses in him. He has been absolutely amazing. Um, I'm not sure whether it's just level of experience that I've had recently with um, working with young foals but this little guy has been by far the best foal that I have worked with in, in, in as far as his personality has a lot of zing about it but he's extremely responsive he's got a very little uh, argumentative attitude but lots of uh, curiosity which is really really important so I'm going to wait until he hops up and then I'm going to show you take you through the first processes of what we do when we're doing our first foal wrap which is the preparation for haltering and it's asking the horse to yield off pressure the baby to yield off pressure and it's a really really important thing to be doing first before we halter the horse and before we do any other training this is the first thing other than the imprinting which is accepting touch this is the first thing that i teach my foals please enjoy and thank you so much for joining us Okay, so we're up, little gangster, which is what we've named the foal. He's just gotten up from a sleep. So when we're working with babies, we really need to work around their timelines. Every session should be really short. So at this age, so day one, two, and three, the foals only spend about under 10 minutes up, and often less if they have a big burst of energy, a big run around, and then they'll sleep for 10 to 15, sometimes 20 minutes. We don't want to interrupt that pattern at all, so we wait. Um, the, the baby will always get up and have a drink and then have a little play. We use that play time to train the, the baby and we only keep it very, very short. So if you can't get it done in the time that that foal is up, don't worry, start again when he gets up the next time. So it's really very, very important that we don't exhaust foals. They have a very short attention span. Um, and we need to really, really work in, in that. If this is for the foal, we're not doing it to him. So we need to be careful that we do it his way. 
So he's just having a drink now and I'm going to walk over and allow him to finish his drink. They don't drink for too long. It's usually, uh, he's, uh, he's doing little laps around his mum at the moment. So he'll have a drink and he'll do a lap and then he'll go back and have another drink and then do another lap. So um, I'm going to use that to, to get the, the foal wrap in. So what I'm about to show you is a really, really kind way of keeping a foal confined. Now you'll often see people wrap their, roll, their, their hands around foals and if you have nothing with you, that's perfectly fine. But the most important part of handling and, and restraining a foal is that we put a barrier in place and allow the foal to find the barrier. We do not constrict them, so do not hold them. There's no reason to hold them tight. They are small and handleable at this age. Now, if you are you working with a bigger foal, please don't use your arms because they will literally learn to fight you um, they can kick you and they can headbutt you and all sorts of things. So if it's a bigger foal that you're working with, if you didn't get to, this, to do this with a younger foal, then please use a rope. Don't use uh, your bare hands. We really need to have good control of the, of the foals. Um, they will learn very quickly how to get away from you if you don't do it well. So he's finished his little drink. I'm going to take this opportunity to step over and do the foal wrap and show you the best way to restrain a foal when it's first when it's very very young within the first five days he has had this done to him so I'm going to show you how I did it when I initially trained him a standard lead rope won't do uh, this is a, a, a very fine um, rope that I use when I'm long reining horses it's and it's uh, at least 12 to 18 foot long a small Six foot lead rope is not long enough to get around the foal in the figure of eight that we use. So you will need an either a 12 foot lead rope, the natural horsemanship lead rope, so ideal, though you don't want to buckle on it because we don't want to bash the horse accidentally in the face. Um, but uh, just a standard piece of soft, not nylon, but soft cotton rope um, it will do the trick nicely. We don't need any buckles or anything on them because you'll see we're making a handle out of the rope um, with just the strands of rope. So. You'll see how this works in one second. Just got a little fright from a car driving down there for the first time. So I'm just going to let him, so if a horse, if a baby gets a fright, I'll always let them go back to their mum. They'll do a, a little comfort suckle and then they'll settle down. Um, I don't want to interfere while he's, she's making him feel sound and, and, and safe. And of course, never work with kids or animals because she's going for a walk now. We've got a horse walking past and she's taking the foal away from me and away from the scary car. So I'm just going to follow her here and you'll see, I'm just going to allow the horse to find the spot. Now, mares can be protective. You, This is a fabulous mare to work with. She is, you know, quite easy, but understand they do get protective. So you must at all, in all cases, keep yourself safe. If it, for any reason the mare is aggressive, please do your training with a halter on the mare and somebody else holding her. Do not put yourself in danger. All right, we are filming live. I did promise you live training. We just had a visitor, a neighbor, stop to say hi and ask some questions. So sorry about the interruption. But it actually gave me a good opportunity to just uh, spend a little bit of time with him, making sure he was okay getting the wrap on. So I will get closer, don't worry if you can't see the wrap yet. But what I want you to see is that I'm working with him and asking him very gently. And every time he does it, I stop asking. So he's wanting to go back to his mum there. So I just pull on the chest rope, okay? Just around his chest, not around his neck. We do not want to pop the rope up here around the horse's neck, you can choke them and damage the windpipe. We don't want to do that. So it's around his chest. Now he's pushing on me here, so I'm just going to use the rope to pop him back away from me. All right, so at no time am I holding this tight. You'll see here that it's loose and he has learned because when I first put this on, when he first went to step away, I put pressure and popped him back and then released when he was back where I wanted. And if he went to walk forward, oh, backwards away from me, I held his arm right and took him back into place. So, and he's just nudging my hand here, which is very cute. So I'm just letting him um, 
play with my fingers. He's not biting, he's sort of just investigating with his lips now. Foals will learn to bite. At this age though, I do not stop curiosity. So I will teach him when he gets his teeth that he's not allowed to do that. I never smack a foal. You'll see uh, later in the training series what we do with horses and babies that do bite. Um, it is a negative reinforcement for biting. It's not smacking. If you smack a horse when it bites, it just gets quicker and you'll end up <laughs> with some really big bruises because they just try and get bigger and better at it for you. So I'm gonna walk him over. So if I want him to walk forward, I ask by stepping forward first, and I see if he can come with me. If he can't, because his mum's behind me, I will just gently put pressure on the bum rope. As soon as he steps forward, I release that pressure. So my hand came forward. Again, I'll step, ask, release. The moment he steps. So what he's doing is he's learning to come off the pressure of his bum. If he goes to move backwards, put the pressure on, release the pressure. The most important part of this is that at no time am I holding this horse tight. There is pressure, this is good because he's leaning on it, there is release, all right? And at this stage, the, the foal is loose, all right? He's choosing, don't lean on me little man, so I'm gonna use the rope to push him away from me. So that's a good example of a, we don't want a horse barging us, he's trying to push me there, so I push him back, all right? There, good boy. I can use my hands, I've got my fingernail in him there to make him uncomfortable because he's really trying to push my space there and he's starting to get a little confident around us so I don't want him ever pushing me around. I want him to learn that I can get push him around, not the other way around. There, I just put pressure on the chest, ask him back, pressure on the tail, ask him forward, pop him over there and there, there's my release. So I'm teaching him by taking the pressure off him not by putting the pressure on him. He's learning to stand. Now, this little guy, while we were working with his mum, there I've got chest pressure on, there he's released off it. Chest pressure, released off it. All right, I just lost my rope around his butt. <laughs> Big girl. So I just used my skill to do a pirouette. <laughs> the mare goes around us and we're safe again. Okay, so um, this little guy had to stand with us yesterday while we did the work on the mare and her placenta and he literally stood in this belly row this foal wrap for a good 10 minutes and he just stood still he went to walk forward a few times and walked and stepped back a couple of times but at no time did I feel like I was fighting against him he literally learned that if he just stood still he was fine it was quite exceptional to have a young foal that stand still for that long so what we're doing here is we're actually teaching the foal to release off pressure so when I put pressure on him there, chest, there, he's back to me, all right? And I release, and he's just standing there of his own accord now, okay? Yes, he knows the ropes are on there, but he's not under pressure with the ropes there. I backed him up, good boy, good boy. He chose not to push on me, bum rope, chest rope, bum rope, <laughs> there, release. As soon as he gets calm and stands with me, I'm not particular about the way he stands, but as soon as he gets calm, I release. All right. Now he wants to go for a drink. Again, I'm going to quit in a good spot where he's standing with me calmly. There. And I'm going to let him go back and have a drink. Now, I can't tell you, you know, strong enough how important it is if your foal wants to go and have a drink, allow it. In these first five days, we do not want to interfere with the health of the foal or the bonding of the foal with its mum. We do the work when they're in play mode. Then they're in drink mode, then they're in sleep mode. Don't go and wake them up to work them because what you'll teach them is that you're an interruption to their sleep and they, don't, they, they really do wake up grumpy if you do get them out of their snooze. And also, um, when they're ready to go to sleep, but I'm gonna show you this if I get an opportunity again, we are filming this live, I'm showing you the, with all the mistakes, all the issues, all the things that can happen. The only cuts here in this video are gonna be if the mare walks out of frame. Um, what you're gonna see is what happens when we get something wrong, um, when we do something wrong or where our timing's out, and I'm gonna give you an opportunity to fix that. Now, you'll notice I said earlier, we don't hold to the horse yet. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I want my horse to yield to pressure, to understand to work with me before I put the halter on. I don't wanna put the halter on and have a horse trying to fight me to get away. I wanna fix that before that comes a problem, becomes a problem. So what I'm doing here is the yielding from pressure, we're working against the nature of horses. Horses love to lean, and I'm teaching him not to lean on pressure. 
eventually when he becomes a riding horse he's not going to lean on the rein nor is he going to lean on my leg when I'm riding him. And that's really important to teach now for a soft, really soft feel for a young horse. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the introduction of how we introduce a halter. We do I do introduce it very, very early, not to use it, but just to get him to carry it. The only time I stress that you should not put a halter on a foal is if you have worry of losing the foal and not being able to catch it again to get the halter off. So if you're working with an extremely skittish foal, do not do the halter up. Allow it to sit, and I'll show you how, how this works when we do the haltering, but allow the, the halter to sit on the horse's face by holding the clasp, but do not do it up because if you uh, something happens and that foal gets away and it's stressed and you can't get back to it. Um, you can risk the, ho the horse getting, the baby getting caught up on a tree or a, a fence or anything and getting themselves hurt. So we don't want to leave halters on foals at all. Okay, so um, I'm just going to cut here because she has of course walked out of frame and I'm going to reset the camera and I'm going to show you how we introduce haltering a foal and this is, remember, day two for him. So it's pretty early on and it's very, very soft and it's just with the intention of getting the foal soft and accepting of the rope. All right, he's just doing a wee, I think. So I'm just gonna step in. I wanna get quite close with this, so I'll bring the video in and show you the first part of getting a horse to accept the ropes. So while he's standing there, I'm going to pop the chest rope on him. And the reason for that is because I want him to understand to work, to stay with me when I'm working with him. Young foals can be boisterous, they love to move around. So if I pop the chest rope on him, this little guy, because of the work we did earlier with the foal wrap, he go, he knows that when, the, when that puts pressure on his chest, he's to step back with me. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, introduce the rope to the face. Now what I'm gonna do is just with the other end of my nice long rope, and this is why I love using long ropes, I'm gonna make a big, like a lasso loop. All right, just like that. It's big enough that his head will fit through that with no issue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce him to it by getting him, just like that. <laughs> to put his face in it, all right? Now that was a fluke, absolutely. But believe me, flukes happen all the time when we're working with young foals. <laughs> He's getting boisterous, he's a little wrecked. Now, see I needed my bum rope there. All right, he settled again. So, <laughs> you're okay. Now I'm gonna pop my bum rope on so you guys can see. I have a lot more control. Because he's starting to be a boy. There we go. I have a lot more control when I have that bum rope on. He can duck out behind me. I lost my chest rope there. Bit of bad luck. There we go. He can duck out behind me as he did there. Good boy. Good boy. All right, I should be able to let my bum rope go now because his mum is in front of him. Make my loop in the rope. And again, I'm gonna introduce his face to that loop and see if he can find the loop. There we go. Good boy. I don't care whether it goes, he goes, his head goes in the loop or not, awesome if it does, but he's just been taught to accept a rope over the top of his ears. Good boy, it doesn't matter if he's shaking his head, he's accepted it, and over his face. I'm just gonna let him go, he wants a drink. Good boy. Okay, we're back. We should just move from one side of the paddock to the other. So what I'm going to show you now, we're getting close to our, our 10 minute mark um, in the breaks in the video when she's been moving around. He's been up for about 10 minutes now. So he's going to want to lay down soon. Now I want to use this opportunity. Now I got the opportunity twice while we were working with the mare with her placenta issues where he was standing for a long period of time and he was super patient, he was fabulous. I've, I've never had a horse as patient. He's been a little bit boisterous today, which is great for you guys to see. But he was so patient and when he wanted to lay down, I actually popped a cue in there. So I used a voice cue 
and a leg touching cue. And he doesn't know what any of that means yet, but if I do that repetitively enough when I'm working with him, because I am working with him every day and doing this video series for you, uh, he is gonna put two and two together eventually, and I should have a fairly good lay down cue early in the horse's life, which is really, really handy if you've got any sort of issues going on. So I'm just going to come and get him, and, and this is where we need to be a whole lot, really, really a whole lot more patient than we usually are. Um, I'm going to finish, let him finish his drink, and then I'm going to pop him in the foal wrap, and I'm going to wait for him to choose to lay down, and then I'm going to put the cue in. Now I can't tell you how long this is going to take. It could take a while. One of the things we need to understand is we're working on his timeline. This is all live, I'm not gonna cut out the middle bit because you need to learn patience as much as anything else when you're working with a foal. So I'm gonna go and pop him in the, uh, in the wrap. He's just scratching his back ear there, his, his ear with his back leg there. Pop him in the wrap and see how we go. And of course, she doesn't wanna play the game. So there's our wrap, all right, and I'm just going to ask him to stand with me here. Good boy. Good man. I'm just going to give him a little bum scratch. He loves a bum scratch, this guy, and it's something that he's going to groom her while we do it. It's something I do do with my foals. Um, you'll see later in the video series um, as he gets older. He's not allowed to demand a bum scratch. It's something that I'm pretty particular about, but if I go up to him and offer it, he can have one, but at no time does he throw his bum in my face for a scratch. But it's something they really enjoy. He loves a little neck scratch too. Good boy. So it's something that they enjoy. Good boy. Good man. And I'm just gonna wait now, and I'm gonna, my, my lay down cue is a thought process. I sent him a picture of him laying down. Now, there'll be a few people out there that think that that was a fluke. Sometimes they are absolutely a fluke. But the most important part is your timing. What we want to do is we want to set the horse up for success, okay? Now, the other part of that is it's really super important to understand that this foal can read your mind. Your horses communicate in, in, to us in images. We don't know what they use to communicate between each other, but I know when I'm working with my horses, I get pictures from them and I send them pictures when I want them to do something. 
So my thought process, I'm not thinking about anything else, my mind is clear and I am just literally sending him a picture of him dropping to the ground and laying down. I had the lay, lay down voice cue, all right, and the little, a little part of that is a little tiny bit of back and down with that um, fold wrap rope, with the chest rope, okay? That's not so important, he will learn that from my voice cue. And on day five, you will see we introduce the whip so that we can use the whip to tap the leg and teach him the, the lay down. So uh, patience, I knew he was getting close to the end of his training time. I knew he was getting close to wanting to lay down. So I set that up for success. I pop the rope on, I stay calm, I keep him quiet and I ask him to lay down. It's literally that simple. Um, and the really cool thing about what I'm showing you here is the more you do it, the more coincidences you're gonna see, the more you're gonna see these horses respond to your thoughts more than you ever, ever knew. And the, the awesome thing about him last night when we were working with the mare is that I'm just sending him pictures of his all four feet standing still and he was amazingly still. I said to Ainsley, who owns the mare, that I've never had a foal be that still before. But I was really particular about my thought process through the the pro, through the time that I was working, I was holding the mare in the fold. I was really particular about what I was thinking while I was doing that. So what I'm going to do now he's laying down is I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you the imprint process. And, and again, I just want to remind you if the mare is at all, shows any aggression, do not put yourself in danger, they can hurt you. It's really important to put a halter and have someone help you halter the mare. Keep her very, very close to the foal, but keep yourself safe. This mare is just phenomenal, considering how she was when we got her 11 months ago. She hated people and we couldn't get near her. She's been absolutely brilliant. Um, so, but, but really, please keep yourself safe. That's, that's so important. I'm just going to move the tripod in so that you can see what I'm doing while I'm... Uh, in, this is the imprint training. So remember, we did this training when the horse was under two hours old before it was able to stand. Again, at no time am I restraining the foal, all right? All I'm doing is waiting for him to accept the touch, whatever that may be that I'm offering, calming down, and then I'm stopping touching him, okay? It's a very short process. I'll just move the video in. We're just going to imagine that he's a newborn. Sorry, you can't see my head. I didn't set that up very well. So when we first touch a newborn, what you'll find, and I'll, I'll um, slot the video in just before I do this, what you'll find is they're reactive to your touch. And what you're seeing here is he's not reactive at all. He's responsive in that he's wondering what I'm, what I'm doing here, but he's not reactive at all. So, but what I'm doing when I'm imprinting is I'm touching all parts of the body. So just gently rubbing my hand over. If he reacts, I'm gonna stay there. I touch under the tail, I lift the tail, and oh boy. So if he reacts to that, I'm gonna lift the tail again. It, he didn't react, he just moved for something, some other reason. You can see the tail's lovely and floppy there. Run my hands down him, down his legs. I touched all four feet. Hi. All four feet, and you can see he's non-reactive here. Touch his face now, again, so there's a little reaction. I'm going to keep patting him until he calms and then I'm going to stop. Okay? <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Move along to his face. I'm going to rub his face. So there's a reaction. So I rub until he calms, then I take my hand off. All right? nice and calm there, I'll step out, take that opportunity to step out. So here I'm going to pop the video in of when I uh, did the work with him when he was brand new. You'll see how they react to touch and you'll see how long I stay there. What The most important part again is to understand horses learn when we stop doing what we're doing. So I'm going to wait until he's calm before I stop patting him. Once he's calm, I can release. And that teaches him 
that if he wants me to stop doing what I'm doing, he just needs to relax. Okay, it teaches a horse to be responsive instead of be reactive.